Good morning, Bethel. This is our order of worship. The call to worship will be done by Berkeley. The prayer by Namani. Choral response will be done by Michael Whitmore. Scripture by Sojourner. The music ministry will be done by Journey in Harmony. The ser sermon, invitation, and benediction will be done by Reverend Dion Jordan. Thank you. God bless. Hello, I'm Berkeley Schumann, and today I'm reading the call of worship. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved in good times and in bad times. We trust in the Lord our God. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, God's people are surrounded from this time on and forevermore. We are surrounded by God's goodness and mercy. We are surrounded by God's love and peace. The Lord does good to those who are upright in heart and do good. We believe that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We come to worship the Lord who surrounds us, does good to us, and invites us to trust. Amen. I miss you. Um, thank you for um, a home. And thank you for my family. Thank you for giving me love. Thank you for giving me um. Nora, thank you for giving me a baby gun. Thank you for giving me a Maris. Thank you for giving me Carson. Thank you for giving me family. Thank you for giving me this house. Because he gives me strength. 
Thank you, Bethel Church. Take me to the key. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Take me to the key. Truth is, I'm tired. All right, pray.
another Bethel Amy Worship Without Walls. Today is another youth service. So it's my pleasure and opportunity to bring a message that I hope resonates with the youth, but also speaks to the adults. Today, we're going to hear about the biblical account of Humpty Dumpty, about a young man by the name of Eutychus. It can be found in the book of Acts, chapter 20, and we'll start from verses 7 through 11. This is what it says. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, kept talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where they were meeting. Seated in the window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul, who was preaching, went down, threw himself on the young man, and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs, broke bread and ate, after talking until daylight when he left. Today, we're going to use for a topic the dangers of falling out of church. The dangers of falling out of church. It just so happens in this story, one of the greatest preachers of the time, Paul, was in town. And when Paul came to town, everybody wanted to be in that town because they wanted to hear Paul. They wanted to see Paul. They had heard so many stories about Paul. Remember, Paul used to be called Saul. He was the one that used to go and capture Christians. And now he's out here preaching the word and, and building churches. So when word came out that Paul was coming to town, everybody came to hear Paul. And Paul was having a great time, a wonderful time. So much so, he decided to stay the night and he decided to preach that evening. And when he preached inside this house, he was on upstairs on the third floor, and the church was crowded. There, there wasn't a place to sit anywhere because everybody wanted to hear him speak. Meanwhile, inside the service was a young lad by the name of Eutychus. Now, Eutychus says they meant good fortune. And today, that name was going to be put to the test. Because the Bible says that Eutychus was trying to find a place to sit. Now, it was pretty crowded in the church. And you know how young people are. They normally like to sit in the back or maybe sit in the balcony or, you know, most of the time away from their parents. Well, Eutychus was no different. He was trying to find his special place to sit. And as he was looking around, he noticed that, that the window seal was, was big enough for him. So he went ahead and he climbed up and, and he sat inside the window seal. What a pretty clever place to sit, right? Because then you could hear the preacher preach. And just in case the, the preacher wasn't preaching too good, you could look out the window and kind of create your own message. And, and that's what Eutychus did. He was sitting up in the window seal while Paul preached. And Paul preached on and on and on. Have you ever been in a church when the preacher preaches too long? Have you ever been in a service when the message was over, probably 15, 20 minutes ago, but the preacher just kept on preaching? And then there always seems like there's that one or two stewards or, or deacons that always say, go ahead, pastor. Take your time, pastor. Say that, and then just get them encouraged to keep on talking. That's what was happening during this service. Paul just kept on preaching. He preached too long. Now, we've all been there. Me, I've done that. I know I've been in services when I was the preacher, and I knew I was preaching too long. 
And I, and I just couldn't stop. I don't know why I couldn't stop. It's not like I couldn't stop because the spirit had me and wouldn't let me stop. I don't think I could stop because I couldn't find a good ending to stop. I don't know what the problem was, but I, I, I've been there. It puts people to sleep. And young Eutychus was falling asleep. He was probably trying to stay awake. He was probably trying to stay up. But when the preacher preaches too long, the Bible says that young Eutychus fell asleep. And when he did fall asleep, and Paul was preaching, and everybody was doing their thing, the Bible says that all of a sudden, he started to fall out of the window. Let me tell you what my biggest concern of Eutychus falling asleep. I'm not too concerned when people fall asleep in church. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I don't think young people should fall asleep. I don't think adults should fall asleep in church. I mean, because after all, we can't blame it all on the preacher, right? We, we can't blame it all on the preacher preaching too long because the, the message is over 20 minutes long. Why? Because who here walks out of a movie after 20 minutes? Who here turns off their 30 minute show after 20 minutes? Who here leaves the game after the first 20 minutes? So it's not that you can't stay awake past 20 minutes. It's not that you can't pay attention past 20 minutes. And so the, we can't always blame the preacher. We're preaching too long. Maybe it has something to do with your love and attention of what's being preached. And so whatever the case, you just was falling asleep. But once again, my biggest concern is not that Eutychus got tired in church. Because everybody sometimes gets tired in church. No, 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 no. My biggest fear is that Eutychus was getting tired of church. As a minister, as a lover of Jesus, that is my biggest fear for you. That one day, you might get tired not just in church, but you might get tired of church. Because we have lost so many people. Why? Because they just got tired of the church. They got tired of people talking about them. Young people got tired of hearing messages that were over their head that didn't make sense to them. People get tired of being used and, and, and abused. People get tired but when they come in and, and they want to hear a word and all they hear are these cliches and, and, and keep hearing all these encouraging words but not always hearing the truth. You don't have to entertain me, but educate me, empower me, help me to do well. I think it should be a Christian crime for bad preaching. I do. I think preachers who preach boring, I, I, think, I think that should be a Christian crime. Let me tell you why. Because they make the Bible look bad. They, 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 make, they make God seem so boring. And, and God's word is alive. God's word is exciting. God's word is empowering. And, and when people take this and just break it down to something so boring or, or, or something so unattractive, they're doing a disjustice to the word of God, which is also God himself. And so, so my fear is that, 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 that one day you might get tired of coming to church. I'm reminded of uh, a, a lady one day who got tired of coming to church. She said, you know what, I, I think I'm done with this church thing. And, and, and she had came to church that morning and she had sat in the in, in, in the church like she normally does and she was only there for about five minutes and realized like, you know what, no, I'm tired of this. I, I could see people looking at me. I could, I, I could hear people talking and, and, and gossiping. I, I, I could see that the children are, are pushed to the side. So she decided she was tired of the church and she was going to leave. And, and as she was heading out, the, the, the pastor was about to come in. And when the pastor saw her, said, sister, where, you know, where are you going? She said, you know what? I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm, 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 I'm tired of this church. So the church hadn't already started. He, he went ahead and he escorted uh, the, the lady over by his office. And he says, okay, 
Well, why are you leaving the church? And this is what she said. She said, I'm leaving the church because I'm tired of hearing people gossip all the time. Pastor, I'm, I'm tired of, of, of coming to the church and, and, and seeing the children just pushed to the back of the church and, and, and forgotten about. I, I'm tired of coming to church and having all the guys looking at me with their, with their Roman eyes. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of, of, of coming to church. And, and the pastor didn't skip a beat. Heard what she had to say and said, okay, well, I'll tell you what. Just do me a favor before you go. Here, stay right here. And, and he poured a tall glass of water to, all the way to the top and said, before you go, would you take this water? And, and, and during church service, just hold this water and, 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 and walk around the church and, and, and don't drop uh, not, 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 not a drip of water. And, and if you could do that, you know what? I won't try to stop you. I'll, I'll let you go. And, and, uh, and the lady who, you know, she was always down for a good challenge, said, you know what? I know what you're trying to do. Sure, I'll do it. And she grabbed the water. And he went ahead and he did his thing and had service. And she walked around the church three times holding this water. And she didn't drop a drip. And after service, she came to the pastor and put the water on her desk and said, I did it. And I, and I didn't drop a drip. And the pastor looked at her and said, okay, let me ask you. When you were carrying that water, did you hear the people gossiping? She said, no, I didn't hear the gossiping. I said, oh, during the service, did you see the children that, that were running in the church? And she said, no, I didn't see the children. She said, when you were in there, did you see all the men that were watching you while you were walking around? And she said, no, I didn't see that. And then the pastor said, why didn't you see that? She said, I don't know why. And this is what the pastor said. The pastor said, you didn't see all that because you were concentrating on your own walk. You, you didn't see all that because you were trying not to stumble. You didn't see all that because you were noticing that your cup is running over and you were trying to balance your cup. And what he was trying to say is that if you, if you could just focus on you and God and not focus on what everybody else is doing, maybe you won't get so tired of church because the people who come to church come because they're not perfect. People come to church because we need help. And the lady couldn't help but recognize that she had got taken her eyes off of the most important thing, and that was her walk with God. And so... My fear is that, that people get tired of church because they're no longer paying attention to the most important thing that church has to offer, and that's Christ himself. And so now you have Eutychus who's up there, and he's in the window seal, and, and he's getting sleepy, and what happens? He falls out of church. The biggest fear that I have following getting tired of church is what the next step is, and that is once people get tired of church, then they end up falling out of church. And the Bible says that when he fell out of the church on the third floor, he hit the ground and was pronounced dead. This was the only thing that stopped Paul from preaching. Paul had been preaching all night long and, and, until that happened, and then Paul stopped. And the Bible says that he ran to the door to, to, to see and went outside and saw the young man who was dead on the ground. Some writers would say, you know what, he wasn't really dead. But let me tell you, the, the, the writer of the book of Acts in the Bible was a doctor. He was a physician. He knows dead when he sees dead. And if he said the young man was dead, I'm telling you, Eutychus died. But Paul, who had, who had stopped preaching, saw him fall from the third floor of the church, hit the ground dead. And you know what he did? He did what I wish the entire church would do when somebody falls out of church. He covered him. That's right. He, he, he covered him. He like protected him. Even though everybody else was crowding around, he covered him. He didn't talk about him. He didn't tell him that he should have been sitting up there in the first place. He didn't say that that's what he deserved. No, instead, he covered him, prayed for him. And the Bible says 
that he rose again. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it a quink a dink? Isn't it funny that the same preached word that put Eutychus to sleep, that he thought was boring, ended up being the same word that raised him from the dead? That's why we can't afford to fall out of church because this word is an alive word. It's a living word. It's a healing word. That's why preachers, you got to preach with, with conviction. you got to preach the, the, the truth. Why? Because people's life depend on it. He fell out of church, but the church covered for Eutychus, prayed for Eutychus, and his name, good fortune, came to pass. I'm going to close with this. True story. I once fell out of church. I once got to the point where I just stopped going. Why? Well, I was living in Texas at the time. I, I was in college. It was like my, my, my freshman year of college. My parents had moved back to Portland, so I'm in Texas by myself. I used to come to church all the time with my father, but now my father was gone. Now I'm in college. Now I have all these other things that I could be doing. And I would miss one Sunday, and I'd go ahead and I'd hang out with my boys on, on the college campus. And then one Sunday became two Sundays. And then two Sundays became just about a month. Then after a while, I had realized that, oh yeah, I, I believe that I still love God. But I had fallen out of the church. Anyone who goes to church knows one of the beauties of going to church is having community. Having people there praying for you. Having people that, that you know are sometimes going through the same struggle that you're going through. And you can encourage one another. I lost all that when I fell out of church. And then one day, I was in my little white escort and I was driving down the highway. It, it, it was, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I-35 in Austin, Texas. And I was going around 70 miles per hour down the freeway early in the morning. It must have been around 6 a.m. in the morning, just flying down I-35. When all of a sudden, my check engine light came on. When I saw that check engine light, I was like, oh, man, well, sometimes when I turn the car off, and turn the car back on, that disappears. But usually when I do that, of course, I'm parked. This time, I'm going 70. With my not very smart self, I decided, okay, I'm gonna go ahead, there's no cars around. The, car, the closest car behind me looks like it's about 60 seconds behind me. I'm just gonna go ahead, get in this middle lane, hit 70, I'm gonna to toss my car in neutral real quick, and when in neutral, I'm going to turn it off and then turn it right back on while, while it's rolling. Now, in my head, it sounded like it made sense. But at 6 o'clock in the morning, that, didn't, that was not a smart move at all. Because when I went and I was cruising and I turned it off and I went to turn it back on, it wouldn't turn over. And so I couldn't start it back up. And then as much as I tried, I noticed my car was slowly moving off the freeway. And when I went to try to change it, my steering wheel locked. And now my steering wheel is locked. I'm heading towards this median on the freeway with cars coming the other direction and the cars behind me catching up quick. And my brakes aren't working because the car is off. Now my brake is not working. Now my steering wheel is headed to crash. I thought life was over. All I remember doing was grabbing the steering wheel slamming on the brake the best I could, trying to pull up on my brake, close my eyes, and just expected the worst to happen. And then all of a sudden, when I was sitting there just frozen, I kept hearing this honking as cars were rushing by. And I stopped and I looked around, and cars were just racing. I had stopped maybe an inch away from crashing into the side wall of the freeway. And cars are zipping by. Then finally I looked up, I had a clearance, I went to start the car, and the car started. And I went ahead and I drove, and everything seemed to be well. The first place I go, now remember, I was on my way to school, six o'clock in the morning. Instead, I decided, you know what, I'm going to my church. I, I just had a feeling, you know what, Dion, before you go anyplace else, God saved you, 
go to church. And so at 6 o'clock in the morning, I didn't expect anyone to be there. I was just going to sit on the porch and thank Jesus for my life. And when I got there, I went up the stairs. I just happened to knock on the door to see if anybody was there. Do you know that my pastor, Reverend David Harris, opened the door? It was at the church at 6 o'clock in the morning with maybe about 15 or 20 other members praying in the morning. And when I opened the door, he looked at me and said, Brother Jordan, we were just praying for you. When he said that, I was fell out. I just busted in tears. I, I told my story and I made it my mind. I will never fall out of church again. I, I, I will never. Like, He's been too good to me to ever fall out of church again. I hope this message touches you. I hope that when you find yourself getting tired of sleeping in church, take that as a warning. Because once you get tired in church, one day you might get tired of church. And if you ever get tired of church, one day you might fall out of church. And we don't want to find you on the side of a road because you fell out of church. Instead, find that commitment, find that love, find that church where you feel like you can be fed. Like that lady, Keep your eyes on your walk with Jesus. And, and don't let what other people say and other people do discourage you. And as a preacher, I promise, I'll try not to preach too long. And I'll always try to keep the word alive in your life. If you've never accepted Jesus and you don't know who he is, it's something that you can do today. At this very moment, where, wherever you are, you, you can simply Pray a simple prayer and ask Jesus, come into my life. And guess what? If you're sincere, he'll come. And I promise you, your life will never be the same. God bless you today. I, I pray that the, the blessings come your way. I, I pray that this message speaks to you. And until we have a chance to see each other again, I say we praise God from whom all blessings flow. So now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly and more than we could even ask or imagine. To the only true and wise God, let his sweet spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all. Hence now and forevermore. And the redeemed of the Lord said, Amen. God bless.